Hey, Alan. Uh, welcome. Um, my name is Tim Bond. I'm a principal architect for Software AG. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, how we are using P2 in our fixed management process for our uh, uh, web methods product line. Um, just for people who don't know about Software AG, we're uh, based in Darmstadt, Germany, about uh, an hour or two away from here north. Um, we have a revenue of over a billion dollars from a few years back. Um, lots of customers, both small and large, in public sector, private sector, uh, as well as government. Um, we've been on the OSGI board for about four years now. And um, get into the talk. So um, first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, our experiences with building uh, fixed management into a large suite of enterprise products and why it's so difficult to do that. Um, then going to get into some capabilities of uh, the P2 provisioning platform and how it, uh, it sort of uh, emerged uh, at the right time for us to start utilizing it. And then talk about how, um, how we use the platform as part of our update manager. And so one kind of uh, funny thing is we call our tool the update manager, which is the name that Eclipse used to use for their um, patching manager before they went to P2. So here's a, um, I like to use Minesweeper in my uh, presentations. Um, so this is a typical enterprise software installation. So you think of enter enterprise, you know, like a, a suite of software, um, multiple things to install and configure. Uh, it's not something that you just can uh, open up uh, in, uh, uh, easy install and just go click, 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 you're done. Uh, it typically, you do that and then you have to s spend time configuring database connections and LDAP and interconnections and things like that. So it's very, you know, easy, everything works. And then you run for a while and, you know, software doesn't always work. So there's, you know, crashes, there's security issues. Um, you actually have to talk with other enterprise software, which, you know, sometimes they have bugs, sometimes you have bugs. Um, so you have to, you have to, uh, you have to fix the software. So about three or four years ago, this was the typical pattern of installing a fix in an enterprise piece of enterprise software. Um, I, I think this is pretty, may have been pretty typical for, for many products. So if you've ever run a commercial Oracle server or uh, any IBM product, I know I, I've run IBM products in a previous life and you know, trying to trick them fixes is, is very tricky. So this is the basic flow. You have to go to the support site. You um, find your product in there. You find the fix that corrects your problem, which can take quite a while in itself. Um, you download the fix, and, and lo and behold, it requires other fixes. So now you have to go find those fixes, and you just keep repeating this process over and over. Um, it can take you several hours, which you will never get back in your life. Um, and so after you have those fixes, then you have a process where you have to unzip the fix, copy files, places, edit parameters, stop the server, all these things. So it's, it's very cumbersome. Um, clearly, most of these things can be automated, um, but at the time, they, they weren't. So I think uh, you know, here's, here's some things that, are, that are problem, prob were problematic at the time. Um, and uh, uh, We'll see in a minute why. Um, so at the time, we were looking for a solution to uh, solve customer problems who they were raising issues with the fixed process, um, mostly around all of that from the previous slide where they have to do the manual searching, um, scripting with the issue. The auditing of what is installed on my server was also important. So the previous. Um, Previous process, there wasn't even an audit record, so you installed like fix 17 and then uninstalled it. There was no record of that even beyond on the server, and that can be important for troubleshooting things. Um, uninstalls were basically back up your software. If it doesn't work, you have to recover. So it wasn't really a good uh, good mechanism. So what do we need? Well, I think most of us have seen. You know, something like Yum, Microsoft Update, or even um, P2 system within Eclipse. So this is what we, you know, 
you, you, know what you, you know what you want on the system. And so we had to go off and build something like that. Unfortunately, our, our software suite is quite complicated. It um, has a lot of different functions, um, lots of different platforms. There's things that are proprietary platforms. There are things that are based on OSGI. Um, there are products that came in via acquisition that haven't moved to our platform suite yet. So there's, it's very complicated to just have one installation method for a fix. Um, I'm not going to the details of this one. It's uh, overly complicated. Um, so, question is, what do we do? So, at the time, um, this was Eclipse. I guess we went to EclipseCon 2008, 2009 timeframe, and P2 was just coming out as a technology to the mainstream development community. At least that's what I remember. Um, and it really sounded like something that we could use as a uh, technology for um, at least assisting with our, our common fix framework. So I think most of you probably, I didn't go to the previous um, um, presentation, but I think it was on P2 as well. Um, so some of this may be uh, repetitive, um, but I think it's, um, I, I find it helpful to go through what some of the, um, P2 can be very intimidating to get started with if you've never used it um, at, uh, at anything but the, the UI user level. And so I'm going to go talk about um, at least the high level uh, vocabulary that is used in the um, P2 technology environment. Um, so the, probably the most important one to know is, uh, is the IU or installable unit. That's the thing that is a, it's a piece of metadata that is used by P2 to make uh, decisions about what it installs, uninstalls, uh, and configures. So um, it has a concept of requires and provided of capabilities. So uh, an installable unit can require something to be there. And it also provides a capability that other installable units can have. So and those things have versions on them. Um, and so the, this, this piece of information is all that P2 needs to understand um, what it can do to a particular environment to run in. Um, the installable unit also has references to artifacts, which are the things that actually get installed as part of a provisioning operation. And it also has a list of actions or, or touch points, which are um, things that happen on the platform as part of the installation. This, so this could be a file copy, it could be a um, configuration, configuration step. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail on those um, next slides. Okay, so uh, this, I think you can read, you think you can read this one. Um, this is a typical um, uh, installation unit from uh, a sample um, bundle I, I built a couple weeks ago. Um, and you can see some of the things from, uh, from the previous slide there. So the, the first section there is the properties. So those are properties you can configure for the, ins the unit. Um, it has three capabilities that it provides. So it shows what it's a bundle that's called simple one. Um, it also has a tag that says it's a bundle, Eclipse type bundle 1.0. Uh, and it also requires a bundle called dep1, which is a um, Java package export. So that means if I ever want to install this thing, I have to have uh, that particular uh, package. So I have to have an installable unit somewhere that has that package exported. Uh, it also has a list of artifacts that are provided. So it's just a, an OSGI bundle. And finally, it has an action or touch point that is, um, so when this thing gets um, provisioned, it actually has a manifest header that goes along, goes along with that. And then this is a, just a, a little screen grab of, of the artifacts that are on disk as part of that, uh, part of that uh, installation unit. So P2 has a notion of two different types of repositories. The first is a artifact repository. That is the thing that contains the actual binary bits of data that you want to provision. Um, uh, the second one is metadata repository, which is the thing that contains those installable units, the things that um, you, you want to um, you want to target to change your software. Um, 
for, for many, for I guess simple systems, those things are typically co-located. So you see an Eclipse update site, they typically have everything together. Um, but it's not necessarily uh, required. If you have a very large repository, it makes sense to have the metadata separate because you can have, the metadata is typically much smaller than the artifacts because there's no actual code in those. Um, Another, con uh, another concept that's important for P2, and it happens is in pretty much every operation you do, is called mirroring. Um, it's also just, you can co call it copying, whatever. Um, and it basically takes a portion of a repository and moves it from one point to another. Uh, it sounds simple, but there's a lot of capabilities in the P2 system to, to, um, to move files efficiently from point to point. Um, the simplest possible one, I, I have an example up there, which is just you can run from any Eclipse installation, you can just run a command line that will mirror part of a repository to another place, just for um, trying out purposes. And there are lots of, um, there's a full API and ant tasks for this as well. Okay, um, and a couple more of these, a couple more of these guys. Um, uh, profile is something you are probably familiar with. That's, um, or the one you've seen the most is just an Eclipse install directory. So that's a list, it's basically a um, directory that contains a list of um, uh, configured software that can be, can be run. So an Eclipse installation is, is a profile. Um, this one in particular is uh, one of our products has a, uh, is running on top of OSGI and it has a directory that looks looks like that. So it's very similar to the Eclipse, uh, Eclipse layout format. Um, the interesting things to look at if you go into the PTO API is to look at the, those two um, interfaces up there. Those, those um, are used to manipulate profiles from within the uh, P2 system. Um, finally, at a higher level, um, when you're actually doing P2 operations, you have two, con two things called the director and the engine. Um, logically, the director is kind of the brains of P2, and it's the thing that figures out what you will install based on um, the repositories that you select, what you're attempting to install, and what you already have installed on the system. Um, the engine is actually the, the, um, the brawn of P2, and that's the thing that actually goes and executes the uh, director's decisions on what needs to be done. Um, there's also, you can run these things by command line as well. Running low on time. Um, at a little lower level, as part of the installation, there are things that you'll see called phases and touch points. These are um, individual steps that take place as part of the installation. Um, phase, some examples of phases are um, fetching artifacts from repositories, installing those artifacts. Um, examples of touch points are things uh, like unzipping a file, uh, changing permission on a file, um, things that you need to do to get a piece of software uh, configured and, and running. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back into, um, back into how we're using P2 in our fix, fix process. So, um, so this is a, a kind of a simplified version of our fix uh, production line. So if we have a we have a, a, a developer who's decided or who has a fix that he has to build for a particular product, he'll um, create the fix in. Uh, he'll change the product and then create the fix, publish it to a dev repo. And there they can run some integration tests um, to make sure everything seems to be working okay on the latest build. It will get published. That's a P2 operation to the QA repository where it goes through a two-day uh, testing cycle with the current, um, uh, current set of fixes that that product has. If everything goes okay there, then it goes into a kind of a GA production. Uh, actually, it's more of a pre-production uh, testing uh, location. And there it actually goes through a more extensive test where it gets tested with different versions of the product, different platforms, uh, and then and also different configurations. And so that one is um, 
much more extensive in, in what it does. If that all goes okay and there's no uh, problem seen, then it gets pushed to the customer, um, customer fix repository, and that's where the a customer could actually pick that uh, fix up. There are also there are ways of getting things directly to customers if they have an emergency, so we don't you know things don't take a week. Um, you know everything doesn't have to go through this, but this is for our production fixes. This is how things go. And so these things are um, PTUs used internally in this process where things are pushed from one uh, between repos and uh, <coughs> wrapped together. The other place, um, the other place that it's used is in, um, which is a very common situation, is the customers don't either don't want or can't connect the fix manager to the internet. So if you have a, um, you know, typically the, the military or the banking customers don't, don't want to um, have the internet touching any of their production systems. So they'll, they will go and run against a production repo in an offline, basically they'll, they'll create it offline and then take that um, image and move it over to um, their, per, their protected environment and then run the update manager again from that environment. In these cases, these fixed images are, they basically we take the fixes and package them up in a, in a P2 format repo so we have the um, information about what's, what's contained in those so that we can apply it. Uh, this is a couple, um, couple of images from our update manager um, screen so you can see it does things like um, you can install from the production re repository, install from an image, um, you can show installed fixes, I think I have that, yeah. So you can show these are fixes that are installed, and then here's a thing that shows, um, it's kind of hard to read, but you can see there's one fix right there in the middle that isn't installed yet. So that's something that the customer could, could select if they wanted to. So, um, let me switch back here. Right, so we are using, um, so P2 gets used um, as part of um, uh, putting together this fixed repository. Um, so the metadata that goes into the, the, the fixes themselves um, apply to all different products. So we have a suite of products that don't all, that are not all OSGI uh, uh, Equinox based. Um, we're moving towards that, but it's still gonna be several years. Um, but we still can, we can still use the P2 technology as a enabler for us by um, wrapping the fixes in P2 metadata and then being able to use P2 capabilities to, um, uh, to work with that, work with those fixes, even though that they, they may not even be, um, uh, they may not even be uh, Java code or uh, OSGI code. And so for future steps, um, probably need a disclaimer on this one. Um, we're, continuing, we're continuing to move our platforms over to OSGI and we'll have more, um, you know, be moving over completely to P2 operations at some point, but we're not quite there yet. We do have things like provisioning, traditional provisioning for uh, product features in, uh, as part of installation. Um, Red said it's, it's, it's not, uh, not there yet. So, um, Two very good resources for um, learning more about P2 are the, um, the OSGI and Equinox book. Um, highly recommended if you, if you don't um, have it already. Um, and also the, the, on, the, the documentation that comes as part of Eclipse, uh, the Platform Plugin Developer's Guide has very good um, examples and APIs about, about the uh, P2 platform. So both of those are, are good to look at. Um, so terrible movie about P2? Not really. Um, any questions from, I'm, I'm kind of out of time, so uh, any questions or comments? Yeah, so the way our fixes are, fixes are for specific versions of the product. So we, if we have a, like we're, um, if we have a 9.0 version of our product, we'll start our fix process over 
with that. And so the, we'll, well, the fixed the fixed repo will will have will have this, this the base repo will be the same. It'll just have a set of fixes for the the eight product and then a version a set of fixes for the nine product. And they may contain very similar. And we, when we put out a fix for different versions, the content is often very similar because we're putting out a new jar file that um, different fix, different versions of the product will use. But the fixes are are different. Um, the way we did it, we mark the them dependent on a particular version. So it'll be the uh, ESB 9.0, and it, the fix will be dependent on that product being installed. So it won't even be a candidate to be installed unless unless you have the right product version. So. Yes? Um, are the fixes um, represented as uh, this kind of patch by you um, They're represented as, they're not like feature patch. They're not like, that level of integration, um, they're they're more just they, they have a uh, wrapped in the uh, installable unit metadata. So we have we know what affixes the, that that level. So, but it's not we're not uh, the products are not composed of a feature and then a feature. We're not using feature and feature patches. Is that what you you meant? Yeah, not not at that level. At least in the majority of the products, there are products that are more based on. Um, OSGI and those, they may be doing that, but I'm not aware of that. Yeah. You mentioned that you're using Q to do um, the provisioning of Mamos Lab, and Q has no uh, blocks support for that. So, what's your experience in sending Q to um, all that? Um, well, at, for those, um, for for those systems, we are kind of stepping. We still have the artifact wrapped in uh, as an installation unit, but we're we're um, we're basically just using the metadata. Not we're not actually getting down at the level of because because it doesn't know how to install into a non-profile. So we we're kind of had this hybrid system where the um, that the update manager will. Um, use part of the P2 metadata to figure out what it needs to install, but then it has to drop to um, something that knows how to talk to um, talk to the native. But it's a lot of these things are just are literally just unzip a file in a directory. So it doesn't matter if yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for this, so as a company, we use different. There's a bunch of different tools to use, but for this process, it's we're down in the API to create the repositories. So it's um, the high-level APIs. So you there's things that you can publish to an API or publish to a repository by um, calling P2 API calls. So we're down at that level. We're not using tooling because all of this has is. Um, Either automated or it's got a web front end, and you you don't even see the the P two is not even visible to the end developers for the most part. Okay, one more. <laughs> um, for the primary fix. Repository, it's one, it's one location, but the customers are, uh, as I mentioned, they can create, they can um, download that as a, they can create a fixed repository and then use that um, indirectly. So it's not, um, that's what we typically see customers d doing, and that's what I, I typically do that as well. I don't because it's like a two. If you have to do it any, even even doing it once, it's often easier to just download all the fixes to a. Um, a zip file, and then use that zip file to install things because they're they're two distinct operations. So, okay. Well, thank you very much.